Number 10. A car tire contains 0 0.038 cubic meters of air at a pressure of 2.2 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter square. How much more internal energy does this gas have than the same volume has at zero gauge pressure, which is equivalent to normal atmospheric pressure? All right. So um, we need a couple of uh, blasts from the past formulas here. So we need uh, the PV equals N, capital N, KT. Right? This is the pressure of a gas times the volume of the gas is equal to then the number of molecules in the gas times the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the temperature of the gas. And we also need then the internal energy, the total energy, we'll say in a gas, is equal to uh, 3 over 2 times NKT. Okay? Now, you might know the formula U is equal to 3, 3 over 2 KT. And that's fine. This is for a monatomic gas, but this is then the amount of energy per molecule. All right. If I want to find then the total amount of energy that's inherent in a, in a certain gas, I need to know then the number of molecules. All right. So I can kind of just plug in the N. This would be, again, this is the energy per, we could say something like per molecule. And then this is the total energy then. All right. So what I now uh, need, what I now realize is that they gave us, you know, they gave us a volume, right? They gave us a pressure, and they said they're basically comparing now. They want us to compare the internal energy to the pressure because there's a change in pressure, right? So first things first, I, I need to somehow connect these two formulas, and I, I can connect these two in a couple of different ways, but probably the best way to do it is to solve one of them for T and then plug it into the other because they don't even tell me anything about temperature. So I know I kind of need to eliminate that variable. doesn't matter how you do this. Um, let's just, how much more internal energy? So what I'll do is I'll solve this for T. So that would be T would be equal to PV over NK. And then take that result and now plug it on in for T over here. And we now would get the total internal energy is 3 over 2 times NK and then multiplied now by PV over NK. Notice what happens to the N and K. And this is the beauty of it. It just goes bye-bye. See you later. And what we come up with is we have a formula here now that details the total internal energy here is really equal to 3 over 2 times then the pressure multiplied by the volume. Okay? And that should, that will, this will always be true, okay, for a monotonic gas. Um, all right. So now we have to just consider that essentially they are talking about how much more internal energy, right? So we're really saying what's the change in internal energy here? If the pressure changes, right, because they're saying that here's the, you know, pressure at some point in time, and then we're talking about zero gauge pressure, okay? So they're talking about delta P times V, and they said that the volume's constant. So this is really the formula we need to use, okay? Now, hopefully that makes sense how we arrived at that. Well, I don't want to change the color. We just want to move it over to the side. So now let's just move this. What happened to the T? All right, so let's just move this on over and this on up. So basically all I now need to do is just plug in my values, all right? So the change in internal energy is then going to be equal to 3 over 2 times the change in pressure. So the pressure will will assume starts at 2.2 times 10 to the fifth, 2.2 times 10 to the fifth, okay? And whether it starts at it or ends at it, it doesn't really matter. We're just trying to find the change so we can just take the absolute value. But then it has zero gauge pressure, right? So zero gauge pressure, you have to know that that means atmospheric pressure. So basically then the change from this value to then zero gauge pressure, which is basically atmospheric pressure, would simply be just subtracting the value of atmospheric pressure, right? Which is 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. I'm going to put that in brackets here, or let me put that in parentheses. Okay, that's the change in pressure. Then multiplied by the volume, right? And what's the volume in the problem? Well, they told us it's going to be in cubic meters, 0 0.038. All right, and voila, we are done. All we have to now do is plug it in. So this is going to work out to 3 over 2 times then, parenthesis, 2.2 times 10 to the fifth minus 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. And then that difference now multiplied by 0 0.038. And the units are all right and everything looks good. So this is going to be about 6.77 or so times 10 raised to the third. And that's in terms of joules. All right. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Uh, if it does, 
uh, please subscribe. If it doesn't, please subscribe anyway. No, hopefully it does make sense. Um, and uh, we do appreciate your viewership very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.